I'm Logan Ryan, and I'm gonna teach you how to take a pet portrait and how to study film like a pro. <clears throat> and how to give a great speech, too. I kind of was struggling early in my career in college, and I started watching more and more film, and being a former quarterback, I started to study the game backwards, what a quarterback would see, but on the defensive perspective. And I would communicate that with my teammates. That was kind of what made me stand out. Whatever unit I play in, my unit tends to succeed. And I think the key of that is the information, the information comes from film study. This is how to study film like a pro. A film study that really paid off for me was a Super Bowl when Malcolm Butler made a game-winning interception. And I remember running that play in practice and us going over it and over it again and him getting it right. I think everyone on our team knew that play was coming. Malcolm was in position to make that play. And he made it, it was a game-winning interception and won a Super Bowl. So that was pretty cool to see film really pay off, not only for me, but for my teammates and the entire team. Step one, prior to the session, read the scouting report. Yeah, film study is important in terms of scouting reports because you really got to know your opponent and you really got to know yourself. One's got to know oneself, my strengths and weaknesses. I got to know my opponent's strengths and weaknesses. And then it comes down to a game of chess and checkers. The more you can think three or four moves ahead, the better you're going to be in the outcome of the game. Step two, bring something to take notes with. What's in those notes, it's going to be the coach that we're playing, his background going to go into the quarterback. Obviously, you got to know who the quarterback is. He drives the show. And it's going to go down to those individual wide receivers, things they struggle against, what they don't like. The beauty of technology nowadays is all this on our iPad. I can get a cut up of this one receiver, every ball thrown his way for the last two years. And I can watch that in 20 minutes. And that used to take days to get all that footage from every single game. So I really want to get into what makes these receivers uncomfortable, make them have a tough day all game long. Step three. Assess your opponent's strengths and weaknesses and how those align with yours. The more that you can understand the strengths versus the weaknesses, the better plays you can get yourself in, the more you can adapt throughout the game. And film studies allows you to learn the other team's patterns, what they like to go to when things aren't going well, what they like to go to to get back on track. So the more we have an idea of how they like to call throughout the game, the more we can adjust our defenses to be in strong defenses for that. Step four, know what each position on the field is supposed to do, even the ones you don't play. And the NFL rosters change um, every single year. There's very few consistency that everybody on the team is coming back. So you're gonna, you're gonna adapt with new guys. And I became a guy to really cater to my teammates. One guy on my left might like to play one thing one way. The guy on my right might like to play completely opposite. And a coach once said, the more you can do, the more valuable are the team, the harder it is to take you off the field. And I realized the key to longevity and the key to getting paid is to be versatile. The ability to play multiple positions the ability to never come off the field. Step five, trust your process. I think the only way you can trust your gut is if you're fully prepared. And I think for me, watching a lot of film makes me feel like I'm prepared on top of other things. And that's when I can really trust my instincts. I honestly compare it to studying for the test. And I remember times when I didn't study at all, I was overthinking things. I was erasing my answer and changing it. Can't choose B four times in a row, that's not right. And I remember times where I studied and really retained the information and went in the test confident. So I honestly feel like in football, the answers are out there and they're in film study. And if you can study for the test and if you can dig through the material, why would you not do it? When I take photos with animals, I just try to make them the star of the show. They're definitely front and center. I'm part of the backdrop. I'm just trying to give them the stage and share my stage a little bit on social media to help them ultimately find a home. My wife and I have three rescue animals and we started a big animal nonprofit called RARF, the Ryan Animal Rescue Foundation. The origin of RARF starts with a photo. My wife was working in an animal shelter and I would go visit her time to time during my NFL season and I started seeing these dogs not getting adopted. So I had an idea one morning, take a photo of a dog that I tend to like and put them on my Instagram call it the Ryan Monthly Rescue. People started reaching out and animals started getting adopted from it and the Ryan Monthly Rescue became a staple and that grew into the Ryan Animal Rescue Foundation. This is how to take a pet portrait. What makes a good photo is something that's authentic, something that has a vibe, not taking it too serious and really just letting the environment and whatever you're trying to portray, let that speak, not try to fake it too much. Step one, learn the dog's personality. 
There's a lot of different dog personalities. You got your hyper dogs, social dogs, wants to go up and lick everybody in the room. You got your couch potatoes, the dogs I try to get. You got your drooly dogs. You got your artsy dogs, carried around in designer bags. All dogs may be anxious, tail may be wagging when they first meet you, and then they might actually show you what their personality is because not only when I post these pictures, I have to come with a good caption. So quick sentence or two of their personality. And if that's your personality or your lifestyle, that dog can fit in with you. So we're all about making a good match. So you gotta make sure that the picture can speak a lot more than the words will. Step two, get any supplies you need to bring out that dog's personality. You have to give them treats, figure out what type of treats they like. Whatever that may be, you have to figure out what they like and let them work for you. And then you, you go from there. Step three, find some good lighting and position yourself to their level. I think when you're working with a dog, it's good to be on their level. A lot of times I've been on the ground, I've been licked in the face. You gotta be willing to get down and dirty with these dogs, man. All those stuff will definitely help for a better photo, but truly that dog's gonna dictate what type of photo it is. Step four, be patient and take a lot of photos. The more the merrier when it comes to photos. That's what my wife taught me. You gotta have that burst camera on, you gotta snap a bunch. If the dog's in a good spot and is definitely working really well, you wanna switch those props up because you can't keep them there forever. The beauty about rescues is you give them a second chance at life. And in America, we love the story of second chances. In sports, we love the story of the underdog. I've been written off tens of times, but I believed in myself. I had a strong support circle believe in myself. And if I didn't have the friends and family believe in me and give me a second chance, then I'll be one of these dogs that don't have a second chance. So I think that these animals need a support system as well. And I believe in giving them a second chance and shine light on that. Ow. Ow. What makes a memorable speech, in my opinion, is how it's received. You can just look in people's eyes, see if they believed it, maybe get a round of applause. A memorable speech I gave was recently I got nominated for this award called the Walter Perry Man of the Year Award. It's for all the work you do outside of football. The whole team's like, speech, speech, on the spot. And I just told all these people, you need to be more than just what you do for work and when people aren't watching and how you can apply yourself. The amount of handshakes and hugs and applause I got for that, a non-football speech about being more as humans and being nice to each other, I think that was a memorable speech I gave. This is how to give a great speech. Knowing how to give a speech is important because all eyes are on you. There's no book or pamphlet that I read when I had to give speeches. It kind of just happened in my life. My peers voted me a captain. My peers wanted somebody to step up in front of the room and motivate. And I kind of just grew into that role. And I'm like, okay, I have no preparation for this. So I have to kind of figure it out on my own and learn from some guys who've done it before. So you're never truly prepared when you give your first speech, but you gotta just kinda go with it. Step one, don't go in too hot. You'll burn out quickly. When you burn out too quickly in a speech, you might not be able to keep the energy up the whole time. You might've came out the gates a little too hot. You didn't pace your voice enough. Guys can just feel it. Guys can just feel that you don't know what you're talking about anymore or you didn't practice it that far. It just went longer than you thought. I think you always gotta know when to end it. And I think a shorter speech is a better speech. You don't wanna have a rambling speech. Step two, know your audience. You really gotta know your peers and you really gotta read the room and what's needed. Sometimes it's some rah, rah, we got this, let's go. And sometimes it's like, look guys, let's settle down and let's do this. When I give speeches in business, or I give speeches at an animal shelter, or I give speeches to my kids, the settings may be different in terms of how much I might know those people. I might've just met them. It might be more informative, ask a little more questions in the speech or whatnot. So for football, I've been a football player my whole life. I know how we're cut and the guys around me are like my brothers. And I think it could be a lot more raw and uncut in a locker room. Step three, be creative. So the inspiration comes from everyday life. I remember talking about my kids in front of the team. I remember talking about my childhood in front of the team, just being authentic and organic and real things that affected me and real struggle or real success stories. Using real life situations around you are always lessons to learn. And the more that you can relate that to people or let people look at those lessons or those blessings, the more that they can understand it. And that's just being creative and realizing what's around you and what to use. Step four, speak from the heart. Usually the night before the game, I might think about a little bit, or when I wake up, I feel like I do my, I have my best thinking. So very little preparation and um, straight from the heart. That's the way to do it. It's really how you take command of the room. You always got to clear your throat. <clears> throat> it's a way to kind of have people look at you without being too forceful about it. And then you continue to say what's ever on your heart. Cause you can prepare for the speech, but the best speeches come from your heart. Step five, 
be present. When I talk about being present, I immediately try to bring gratitude into the situation, saying something like, man, I really appreciate y'all. I'm really thankful to be in the position I'm in. I'm thankful to be able to lead, or I'm thankful y'all believe in me, and I believe in you. And then you can continue to say whatever on your heart. I believe football speeches have helped me in any setting because it comes down to confidence. When you're on a team with six foot four, six foot five, 300 pound men, and I'm five foot 11, under 200 pounds, and they're looking down at me for inspiration, it shows that you can lead people of all sizes, big and small. It doesn't matter age, doesn't matter how big you are, doesn't matter about stature. If you truly believe what you're saying, you can lead people. How to. How to. And that is why, if you're going to be all bark, you better back it up.